At the end of the lesson, you are expected to identify a generative model, determine the way of making a generative model, and appreciate the value of generative model in machine learning. We have been talking about how we can generate data that has a very close resemblance to the ones that we have already observed. So I also would like to repeat this that having more comprehensive understanding of random variables, I have to write this one, because you really have to have comprehensive understanding of random variables is this is very helpful in handling errors. Okay. So in our past few lessons we've been talking about noises or errors, right? So these errors and handling these errors are very important especially when we are talking about linear models so to follow through you may study starting from lesson number one because um with that lesson or from that lesson or in that lesson we talked about uh random variables okay so we have lots of lessons about that so please review study all of them so before we continue hit that subscribe button to enjoy more our deep learning mastering machine learning algorithm and natural language processing courses click the notification bell to receive more updates so let's continue a generative model has this form so we have this yn is equal to w t or transpose xn plus this random variable okay so here in this case, we are considering our sales performance data just for consistency and we could just compare and go through or we can get along with our discussions and how um, these things really affect our model. Okay, so what we're considering in our model is generating the nth, the nth sales performance from this function okay so this function i mean this function so as you could see he, here we have added this one right so we, we've added a random variable and in our last lesson we said that this one represents our error so i put the link in the description box below for you to just easily navigate through our previous lesson Okay, so now after we are done with the first part, which is this one, the next decision is actually really very crucial. And maybe you would like to ask me, um, why then? What makes this one really very crucial? So what we have to decide is the distribution of the random variable. Okay, now this is really very crucial because um, we have to decide about the distribution of our random variables. Okay, so I'm writing here some words so that you would not be able to forget them and it would really stick in your mind. So, there are things that we must consider before going further. Okay, so the first is the difference between the model and the actual sales okay and this difference is actually a continuous quantity right so i think let me write here so this is a continuous quantity the difference between the actual model i mean the the actual data and the model is a continuous quantity so i don't have to discuss to you what continuous variable or continuous quantity is I, I assume that you already know that but if you don't have some ideas about how, what this one is um, you can just go back to our previous lesson so we had that okay and you could learn more about this continuous variable if you watched that lesson of ours right so what makes this even more interesting is the fact that one random variable is assigned to each business year so that means for each business year okay 
we have assigned a random variable so business year one one okay so because of this we have this now we now have this expression so we have the probability of our first random variable going to our um, a random variable p which is equal to the total product of the probability of our random variables okay so as you could see here we are actually um, um, uh, using lots of the things that we've learned before we are incorporating all of them to come up with a certain expression that could really help us in building a very robust model okay so um, so now let's continue so again I would like to repeat that what makes this one is interesting is the fact that in every year there is always a corresponding random variable and maybe you would like to ask me um, is the random variable always the same now the answer is no because the fact is that in each year there would always be different forms of data there would be different values of data so that's why our errors uh, our random variables would not be the same right so that's why we call it continuous okay and because of this kind of situation we could say that our random variable is independent okay so this is independent this is again another thing that we discussed before in our past lesson so um, please review that so at this point and I know you would like to ask what is the assumption behind this one okay this expression <clears throat> sure, excuse me this part of our expression is really very important okay so what is then the assumption behind this okay so our assumption is this this is a normal distribution or Gaussian remember these terms see we are always going back to our to our previous ones so it has zero mean okay it has zero mean and variance and variance don't forget that again let me repeat that it has zero mean and variance okay so having this is really very beneficial in our model because it permits the random variable to, to have both positive or negative positive or negative okay and then another advantage of this is that it gives okay this can be connected to the squared loss and this is its another advantage so for this kind of assumption I'd like to leave with you to find the, the justification why this one is zero and um, it has this variance okay so you can just do by yourself the justification and please comment down below what you what you will find out so that we can discuss properly so but then of course as far as the loss function is concerned you have to be very careful in in, in in doing that okay so examining our model we could see that it has two parts okay let's go back to this one so if we're going to examine this we could see that it has two parts the first part is this obviously okay so what is this this is actually deterministic component and this is the trend this is the trend or the drift so notice that it, when we make a graph of our model you could see the direction it could be going up it could be going down right so this is the component that do that and then we have the second part which is this one and 
we have already said that this is the random component and this is actually the noise if you could still remember okay so and we have to always re remember that we are not restricted to noise from a Gaussian distribution what is this for why do we have to study this using generative model can help us discover more patterns and irregularities in input data the good thing in this kind of discovery and learning is automatic it also helps us to understand the probability distribution of the training data after all being said and done let's try this what is the form of generative model what is the assumption behind the random variable and what are the parts of the generative model please don't forget to leave your comments or your answers in the comment down below so that we would be able to have a very rich interaction and exchange of ideas do you want to know more about this course just click the card on your right screen you can enjoy our deep learning mastering machine learning algorithm and natural language processing courses learn and upskill for free